Hey there guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about air tags. Specifically, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own leather air tag case, which can slide onto the collar of your favorite pet, onto a camera bag, handbag, or even the belt of your favorite child. First of all, the minimum you'll need to complete this project is a sharp knife. You also need thread and needles, which are designed for leather working. You need some kind of punch for making the holes for your stitches, and you'll need a hammer. The ruler is also useful, but not essential. If you want to go a step further and refine your project, some optional extras are an edge beveler, edge burnisher, and some burnishing compound, all of which will allow you to finish off your edges to a higher standard. Also a scratch rule is useful for marking, but you can use a scribe or a pencil or anything similar. Spring dividers are useful for marking out your stitch lines, although these will also be on the templates that I'm providing. And contact adhesive does help to hold everything in place while you're making your stitches. If you look around on places like Amazon, the majority of these can be found in cheap leather starter kits for about 10 or 15 pounds, which will be able to get you started in this craft. First thing you need to do is select your leather. If you've been following me for a while, you know that my favorite is a full grain veg tan crazy horse leather, but there are lots of different types available to suit your preferences and your budget. I talked about this briefly in my last tutorial, but for the best explanation, I always recommend checking out Little King Goods on YouTube. Once you have your leather, download and cut out the free template I've linked in the description below and scratch the pattern onto your leather using an awl, scribe or pencil. I'm actually doing this all by hand here without a template. That's because what you're seeing here is actually the first product which the template will be based on. But it'd be a lot easier for you because you can just print off those templates and trace around them. Now cut out your shapes using your knife. For the exterior rounded sections, I recommend using a number of straight cuts for the best edge rather than trying to follow the curved path with your blade. If you want to take your design to the next level and you have access to the edge finishing tools I mentioned earlier, now is the time to bevel your edges, making sure to go over both the front and the back. A little trick if you find your beveler has lost some of its sharpness, you can strop it using a piece of ordinary leather thread. Next, apply your edge burnishing compound. I find tokenol to be the best, but there are other cheaper alternatives, such as beeswax or gum tragacan. Finally, finish off your edges by running your edge burnisher along them back and forth until smooth. Now you have the final three pieces of your air tag case. Take the rear pouch section and the rear strap and center them together. Using the center markings from your paper template, punch a hole through the center of each. If you have adhesive, you can use it now to glue these together using the center hole to line them up. Just be careful to place each piece of leather the correct way round with the top sides of each piece touching. Now you can mark four extra stitch holes in an X pattern about your center point and stitch the two pieces together. Work from the center out and back to the center each time, finishing with an additional half stitch so that your threads are on the same side at the end. Then you can cut them off and burn them. I would usually recommend using a thread zapper or a lighter to clean up the ends of the thread, but I didn't have either of these with me, so I'm going with some matches that I found. If you have access to leather rivets and or don't like stitching, you can save time now by using these instead of threading these pieces together, but I personally prefer to use thread here because it's less likely to scratch your nice new Apple AirTag. The next step is to line up the front and back sections of your pouch. As before, I'm gonna add a little adhesive to hold everything in place. 
This time though, you've got to be really careful to make sure you line up the front and rear straps so that they run parallel to one another. If it helps, you can use a ruler to measure the gap at each end, or you can simply place it in behind and use the lines on the ruler as a guide like I've done here. Once you're happy with the placement, you want to use your punch to make holes for the thread in line with the markings on your pattern, and then stitch the two pieces together. I'm using what's called a saddle stitch, which uses two needles. I'm not going to go into the details of how to do this because there's plenty of other trolls on YouTube, I'm sure, and it's really easy to learn, honestly. Just watch a video and within a few minutes you should have the hang of it. Once you've made it to the end, you want to finish your stitch by adding a couple of back stitches through the holes that you previously went through. Then take the thread that's on the front of your pouch and add a further stitch, so what we would call a half stitch, so that both threads are now on the back where you won't see them. You can then cut and burn the ends of your threads. Now before we go on to the final step, we just want to make sure that everything fits as it should. If you're adding glue to your pouch, you might want to grab a butter knife or something equally blunt and round, and just make sure that the inside of your pouch is free up to the stitches. Otherwise, any excess glue can cause it to stick together and then the air tag might not fit. There's actually a specific tool for this called a bone folder, but a butter knife works nicely. Now since the air tag hasn't actually been released yet, I'm using a mock one which I made up out of leather, which pretty much fits the exact dimensions of the real one, albeit without the same smooth edges. Now based on this mock-up and my calculations, this case should perfectly fit the real AirTag as well, but I'll be sure to verify this and update the templates if necessary once the AirTag is indeed released. Okay guys, this is the part where we need to size up our AirTag case to our pet's collar. Now unfortunately I left my dog and its collar back in England, so we're going to have to go catch another one. Okay, so we have our collar and our new work surface so we can get this air tag case finished. What you have to do is get your collar and your air tag case and we're going to center it in the middle of the collar accurately as you can and then we're going to fold one side around. You're happy with the positioning, keep it holding it tight and turn it over. Now we're going to mark not in the center because then you're going to have these joining. You want them overlapping because we're going to be sewing them in a minute. So we're going to mark about 10 mil to one side. And we're going to do the same the other side. So keeping it held down firmly, I'm going to overlap the other side over and just mark roughly 10 mil from the middle. So we're going to go on to the second one now and do the same thing. So getting a knife, we're just going to cut those off now. I'm trying to keep it relatively square. Okay, so we're going to get the centered up again. And you're going to see that you've got an overlap now. Once you're happy with the position and the overlap, you're going to be marking in the center of where the two pieces overlap, which should be the center of the collar. I'm just going to knock this through now. If you're going to do this with the lead in place, be careful that you don't go all the way through to the lead. I'm just using this as a method to mark the two pieces of leather. And we're going to do the same with the top. Now it's up to you here again whether you use glue or if you just start sewing but i'm going to glue these in place just to make life easier for myself now again using the punch to line up our holes it does help if you keep the collar 
underneath because that will help you work out where it needs to be and keep everything nice and tight. Put something between the top and your bottom so when you're hammering through you're not going to be going into your nicely finished off leather. So I'm just using a ruler, something soft would work a lot better but this is just what I have. Go around and mark out our X. Again, if you have rivets, that could make life easier at this stage. But I like to use thread because it's a little bit softer since this side is going to be on your pet's neck. So now we're going to do the same as before and just stitch through both of these. This is when these curved needles can actually come in handy to make it easier to get inside and look back out again. And again, we're going to finish off with an extra half stitch to have everything inside, and we can cut that off and finish off those ends. I like to have my own little finishing touch, and the paw seemed appropriate given the use. But there we are, our finished air tag holder. And if we get our fake air tag, we should be able to just slide that in the back. So you can get that in and out nice and easy. And once you've slid it onto the collar, that front piece will hold it in place. And that should last you and your pet a lifetime.